Hello everyone, and today we're watching Empire of Brazil, part one, by Extra History. Please go watch the original video, please go give them all the love, it's their video, not ours. Um, yeah, so hello everyone, hello again. Uh, we're back in Brazil. Back in Brazil? Back in Brazil. Um, hold me. Exciting. Should we begin? Shall we begin? Please go and give all the original love for the video to the original creator, and let's begin. Lisbon, Portugal, November 30th, 1807. Nervous people gather in the driving rain, heading towards the docks to see if the rumors are true. They say Napoleon's troops have just entered the city, and that oh, yeah, the unthinkable Napoleon. has happened. Along the way... Do you know much about Napoleon? I know some. He conquered basically all of Europe. Yeah, I know so he some. made one big mistake that the Germans made. They, he invaded Russia in the winter. Well, that's not a really good idea, is it? I mean, I'm not a tactician, a military tactician, but even I know not to invade Russia in the winter. But I'm sure the other military tacticians, professionals, on the internet will also say the same. Or they'll say I'm wrong Doesn't somehow. Russia have, like, really rough winters? Yes, all of those countries do. Yeah, I know, I die. I'm like They pass posters hastily nailed up around the city. The ink is starting to run, but they can still make out the message. The House of Ragunza is fleeing. No, they don't believe it. That is until they see aristocrats trying to swarm aboard ships. Braganza. While others call in... Is Braganza the the Portuguese royal family, then? I wouldn't know. I'm not a historian. Yeah, I'm for not... family members lost in the confusion. And even someone, partway through loading the royal library, has abandoned half the books to the rain on the dock. Then the oh, crowd shit. sees a group of ships already disappearing on the horizon. Ships that carry well, the queen and quick, prince regent. They? Indeed, the whole court. Abandoning the heart of their empire to flee into exile, attempting to re-establish its rule in its wildest and largest imperial territory, Brazil. It's almost as like they wouldn't do that in real life again, would they? <laughs> they have responsibility. Nah, we'll yeah, go. Yeah, we'll go. Leave the people to deal. Yeah, it's your problem now. <laughs> we'll take your tax money. We can't take the books, but we'll take the tax money. We'll take the money and the gold. Yeah, we'll take all that good shit. I love the this intro. episode of Extra History is brought to you by all of our wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Kidding. Thanks so much for your support. Though John the Sixth was destined to inherit an empire, no one would call him a lucky man. He began his life with clear indications he'd lost the genetic lottery. Famously less than good-looking and often sick, there were times during his youth that it was thought he wouldn't survive. He was. Could that be? A, that could be a, a indicator of him inbreeding. Most of the royals were inbred though back in the day. Stop whispering. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, most of the royals were inbred though. Hmm. In anywhere in history. Hmm. It's a way to keep the bloodline pure. I thing. mean, if you see the ancient Egyptians, a lot of their pharaohs were in, inbred and hence why they didn't last long. Yeah, it's to keep the bloodline pure. That's or all it was. Or try to. To decide which video we watch next, comment down below and one of you creative individuals will feature in our next video. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the video, you'll win a cookie. A yummy cookie. Warning, cookie does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, cookies, ace makers, or biscuits. <laughs> They're just gonna video of ace biscuits. On, now back on with your scheduled video. Yeah. Also unlucky in love, hustled into a political marriage with Princess Carlota Joaquina of Spain. Their marriage would be eternally unhappy. Wed by proxy oh, when he was true. 17 and she only 10, he found he neither liked nor trusted her, suspecting she was a political agent of Spain. She, in turn, hated the Portuguese court, which was so religious and austere that women were not allowed to have social lives and theatrical comedies were banned. She considered her husband ugly, buffoonish, and jealous of her vivacious personality, and also she was totally a political agent of Spain. John was never supposed to be king, but when he was 18, his father died, followed two years later by his progressive and intellectual older brother. Then, two years after that, his mother the Queen had a mental breakdown, falling into a deep depression and occasionally being unable to understand what was happening around her. Mental symptoms, which may have been a result of her That's incestuous ancestry. Yeah, sorry, we sort of skipped over the incest thing. See, John's ah, I father fucking knew was it. also his I knew it. uncle. The House of Braganza was interesting. So here's John in 1792, suddenly being offered the role as Prince Regent to rule in his mother's stead, and he refused to accept. Because, you see, under the laws of Portugal, if he died during his regency, and his right. children were too young, his wife would become regent. 
And by this go. time, it was pretty clear that if Carlota got her way, she'd make Portugal into a Spanish puppet. His there best option was to act unofficially as regent, relying on counselors for seven years until his kids got older, which just encouraged rumors that he was secretly mentally unstable as well and unable to take the reins. And this wasn't a great time for rumors of weakness because revolution was sweeping Europe. The American colonies had broken away, and in 1793... Freedom! <laughs> my eagle showing freedom! Freedom! Oh my god. France executed its king. Then, Portugal joined Spain and Britain in a political bloc to invade France, but were defeated. Yeah, the Spanish, sorry, the Spanish. The, as I said in previous videos, England and Portugal are the longest, uh, well, Alice. basically has the longest alliance in the world. We have backed each other in basically everything, and we've never acted against each other, really. That's a good thing. That means we're, I guess we're natural allies, though. Yeah. Like, naturally, we're just allies, so... Hi Portugal. Defeated, resulting in Spain switching sides, all of which left John in a political box. Allying with Spain and France would make political and military sense, but Portugal was now economically tied to Britain. So his answer was a careful policy of neutrality, balancing France against Britain, but that quickly collapsed. And then, in 1799, he finally accepted the official regency. But then another player appeared on the scene, Napoleon Bonaparte. And he had Ooh. had it with Portuguese neutrality. When John didn't commit to an alliance with France, Napoleon backed a brief Spanish invasion that... Also, I don't know if you knew this, uh, South America love Dragon Ball Z. They love it. It's real. They absolutely love it. I know it's not Lost Portugal's several border areas and part of Brazil to French Guyana. But still, John refused to give up the alliance with Britain. And in fairness, he didn't really have much of a choice. Join Napoleon, and he'd probably bankrupt his country, as well as make the passage to his lucrative colony of Brazil incredibly dangerous, or join Britain, and France would invade. And as if these years of seesawing interests weren't enough, he also discovered a plot to remove him, centered around none other than his wife. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but in 1807, like the dam finally broke. France officially announced its intention to invade, and it was clear that the Portuguese military couldn't stop them. Now, Prince Regent John had a few choices, but none of them were good ones. And rather than end up a puppet king or under house arrest, he decided to dust off an old contingency plan that had been kicking around for decades. He, his family, and the entire court would board ships and evacuate to Brazil, which they'd fashion into a new imperial capital. It was a mess. John and his family boarded so fast that everyone but Carlota and two daughters went on a single boat. A dangerous prospect, since if the ship was lost, it would wipe out the royal family. Also, hectic preparations meant ships went out overloaded with passengers, but short on food and water. Families got separated. I thought that he would plot to get his wife killed. Leave her behind? <laughs> yeah, leave her behind and the daughters. Maybe not his daughters, but leave her behind. Like, oops, I forgot something. And some something. aristocrats had to abandon their luggage to make it in time, boarding with nothing but the clothes on their backs. This chaos on the dock really led to problems now. at sea. The overcrowding was so bad, food had to be strictly rationed, and some of the most powerful people in Europe had to sleep on the open decks. An outbreak of lice forced many women to shave their heads, and for two torturous weeks, they were becalmed in the middle of the Atlantic. Meanwhile, the inhabitants of Brazil gathered to receive the royal couple with an air of understandable excitement. This was the first time ever that the European royals visited one of their colonies. Oh, and you know, they'd just seen all the portraits of Prince Regent John, his princess, and the queen. They were pumped. Thus, it was a little awkward when they met the couple and found out that not only had the portraits somewhat generously portrayed them as more attractive than they were, with fewer facial warts, but they were also very much worse for wear after the voyage. <laughs> the Bergunzas, by contrast, saw a world they could scarcely imagine. Rio de Janeiro was nearly two and a half centuries old at that point, yet it still felt like a frontier port. Streets. So they never ever visited their colony for over 200 years? Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry, if I was king, I'd at least visit, like, at or you least send, if you my can't first, visit, you'd send, like, it was someone important. a second-hand person or something. Yeah, someone important to visit. Like, to at least show them that you that you care. You should show you care. They are, like, Still your, your, your subjects. Yeah, they're under your And role. as they're saying now, it's like, the streets are st were considered a frontier, so, like, they weren't as developed as Portugal. It were unpaved and muddy, and there it was small unable to house the thousands of courtiers that came in on the flotilla. No matter, the royal family moved into the governor's mansion, using the attached jail as a servant's quarters. 
And if any government official or court figure or, you know, just a royal friend or relation needed housing, they just seized it on royal authority and booted out the current occupant. Which, as you can imagine, no, made them taste. super no. popular. In fact, no. some homeowners avoided this fate by knocking down a few walls, laying timber around, and claiming their house was under renovation. Renovations yeah. that somehow just never seemed to stop. But as the citizens Good of Rio him. pretended to oh, renovate well, their houses, John went about renovating Rio. First, he declared it the new seat of the empire, removing all of the restrictions it had suffered under as a colony. Previously only able to trade with Portugal, Brazil could now send its sugar, coffee, and gold to other markets, particularly the United Kingdom, which became its most lucrative partner. John also established a working government and elevated the prestige of local churches. But most importantly, he established new cultural, artistic, and scientific institutions, such as theaters, a royal botanical garden, and several universities focused Ooh. on mathematics and natural science. And that last one was big, since those subjects were not allowed to be taught at a university level in the colonies. He was essentially changing Brazil from a backwater colony set up for nothing but extracting wealth to a territory that could stand on its own as a nation. But there was something else that was different about Brazil. It wasn't just the muddy streets or rough buildings that struck them as they got off the ship. It was the large number of enslaved Africans. Brazil was the largest slave society in the Americas, the recipient of 40% of all people kidnapped, enslaved, and transported from Africa. In its history, Brazil imported four times the number of slaves as the United States or Haiti did, and nearly every aspect of their economy, from sugar and coffee production, to gold mining, to how the rich got around cities carried on palaquins, involved slave labor. And that would increasingly cause friction with Portugal's greatest ally, the United Kingdom, which banned the slave trade the same year John arrived in Brazil. So there, in a backwater oh, colony, so with an economy based off perpetuating crimes against humanity, John built his new court. But what he didn't know was that he was also founding an empire. You know, one of the main reasons we're... That is so cool. Please go and watch the original video. That is insane. I actually really like that. We're watching him go from set up for failure to building something. That's not true. Hmm? That's true. You did watch him like go from nothing to that. Yeah. At least oh, he's yeah. trying. At least he's trying to better the place that he was in. I personally would have got rid of uh, my traitor screen. Traitor, traitor. That's what I would have done. Kicked her off. Kicked her off in the sea. Oh, yeah. she died at sea. How, oh, how horrible. <laughs> Say goodbye to your mother. Fucking I don't think the kids would know them, don't they all have like servants at that point? Like, the royals didn't really take care of them kids. Good point. They all had servants at that time. Alright kids, see you later as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's really bad. How you um, like him up more off the boat? <laughs> what the flag? What the flag? Uh please go give the original video the credit. Um this was a great video. We enjoyed it. Um we didn't talk much throughout because, quite frankly, I was taken by the story. Um, it's quite interesting. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Toodles. Let's go. Time to grind. Get inside your mind. Yeah, we working overtime. That's the only way to climb. We gon' make it in our prime.